welcome to SA Weekender Favourites. It's great to have your company. Today we'll be sharing with you some of the highlights from the past year of exploring our wonderful state. So without further ado, here's where we're taking you today. Michael enjoys the sweet life at a favourite city hotel, how you can get within a whisker of these big cats, I go for a wild ride at a Riverland winery. But first, Belinda meets SA's gorgeous posing pooches. People visit wineries for a range of different reasons, whether it be for the wine, the food, or a beautiful atmosphere. I'm about to introduce you to a couple who are all about the dogs, like Pasco here from Samuel's Gorge. In fact, they love the dogs so much, they've written a whole series of books about them. Wine dogs. They feature gorgeous portraits of dogs who live at cellar doors, along with funny captions about their individual quirks. Now a worldwide phenomenon, Craig McGill and Sue Elliott got the idea right here in South Australia when they went wine tasting in McLaren Vale. Sue and I would arrive at a winery, we'd be greeted by the dog, like Pasco. The dog would lead us into the tasting room. At the end of the holiday, we had all these dog photos. And we uh, jokingly said to each other, there's probably a book in this. At 15 years old, Pasco is a wine dog favourite and has been featured in the books twice. He's no supermodel, but he's very leggy, so he's a quite a good looking dog. They've drawn the best out of his personality, which is always fascinating to see. The personality shine through the picture of a dog. Shorthead pointers Olive and Sophie are just two of the dogs who have the run of Maxwell Wines. Even though there's an award-winning restaurant, beautiful views and even a maze, they know it's their celebrity that draws in the crowds. It must be pretty cool. You've got them wandering in. Absolutely. People mate. probably get starstruck. <laughs> yeah, ask, ask for a paw print signature. Yeah, exactly. And then we'd love to think as well that they're flicking through here, find another canine that they want to go and meet and head off to that winery next. OK, Jeremy, let's get them on the couch. Craig and Sue have a knack for capturing the unique personality of every dog. So I'm keen to see a photo shoot in action. You could say it's a little bit like herding cats. Yeah, mate, we've got a today. Good gear, you've got it. Take one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a shot. These two gorgeous dogs are a little wild, fun loving, and always doing the unexpected. A little bit like their owner, Chester Osborne from Darrenberg. These two have featured in the Wine Dogs book, haven't they? They have, that's right. Niece and uncle. OK. So we've got Digby's the uncle. Yeah, and Uppy. Now, Uppy's called Uppy as in unidentified party injury. You know when you wake up in the morning, you've got Oopsie a bruise daisy. on your arm? Yeah. yeah, and you can't remember how you got it? It's an Uppy, you know? It's going to be a true test of their skill to see how they get these two to sit still. So how do they deal with pups who'd rather play? Well, we can't let all the secrets out, <laughs> but uh, I always carry a couple of different squeaky balls and lots of treats for the dogs. If all else fails, we have a toy called Elvis the Magic Chicken that always gets a reaction. It, sometimes it's a bad reaction because the dog just freaks out and runs away, so that's not always a good thing. My backup toy. <laughs> <laughs> Cattle dog Barney is a bundle of energy, and since he first appeared in the books as a pup, visitors often come to Wirriwirra just to meet him. I was very surprised actually. I think Craig has a bit of a knack for working with dogs. He nailed it, and I think Barney looked a much better behaved dog than what he actually is in everyday life, so he did well. But just like supermodels, sometimes they just aren't in the mood. Uh, oi, get up, get up. Uh, uh. Only one thing can fix this. Elvis the chicken. What is it you love about dogs? Oh, wow, I, I just love how they communicate with people and they're all very different in their characters as well. Yeah, I think they make you laugh every day. That's what I like about dogs. They're just funny people, four-legged people. Remarkably, Craig and Sue have just released their 20th book. To see their extensive selection, just head to their website. And why not devise your own tour and go and meet the amazing dogs of our South Australian cellar doors in person? Don't forget to give them a pat from me. <laughs> After the break, chilled wines and fun vibes on the Murray. Cordo 
Chateau Vineyard would have to be one of South Australia's most unique wineries. Set right on the banks of the mighty Murray, you can arrive by car or by boat. Just pull up and step onto the lawns of the cellar door. What a way to make an entrance. Set right in the heart of the Riverland wine region, if ever a place has made the most of its location, it's got to be Cordo Vineyard. For starters, it's an outdoor tasting room where you can sip their award-winning wines, famous reds or white sangria and beer. Just steps away from the river are large private booths. Cheers. Here you can sit back and enjoy cooking up some snags and steaks on a mini cooker, order up a wood-fired pizza or a generous platter of local produce. Having grown up right here, Zach Cordo is all about sharing his amazing part of the world. You wake up every morning, you pinch yourself, you're just like, this is just out of this world, this place. You're basically sitting down here on the edge of the Murray with all the wildlife around you and a bunch of like-minded people that just love getting out on the river and just being outdoors is, is very, very different experience. So people can enjoy more of the beauty of the area, Cordo has started private boat tours. Called the Grape Escape, their new flat-bottomed boat can take groups of up to 40. Along with plenty of wine and food, there's something new to see around every twist and turn, like these stunning limestone cliffs. Most of it we've been doing from Morgan to Cordo Vineyard and return back to their shacks or up to Wakery is not a problem. There's plenty of little spots along the Murray that are really, really interesting. You're never going to get the same day twice. Around another bend, we disembark at one of Zach's favourite spots. This is a beautiful sandbar here at Markaranka Flat. You'll find these dotted all up and down the Murray River between the mouth and all the way up to Renmark. They come and go with the floods. It's the perfect setting to take in the natural wonder of the area. Just one of the many places you can visit. The team is happy to organise catering for your group too. People have been really loving it. We can do food, barbecues, drink packages, you name it. Whatever you can come up with, we can pretty much do it. Back at Cordeaux, we're reminded that the river isn't always this peaceful. It truly is the mighty Murray. This tree's seen a bit of history. All these markers here are all the different flood levels that we've seen. And you see 56 nearly wiped everything out down here. It was up to the gutters on the original homestead there. And I've got an insider tip for you. If you ask nicely, there's an incredible collection of vintage cars and motorbikes you can see. It's not what you'd expect to find from a vineyard, but I think that pretty much sums up Cordo. I love how every winery in South Australia has its own personality and feel. Cordo is laid back, fun and so welcoming, and they definitely make the most of their incredible location. Just a two hour drive from Adelaide, Cordo Vineyard is a breeze to get to. Book a private Grape Escape boat tour and choose your own itinerary or let the team surprise you. There's always something fun happening at Cordo. Check their website for their latest events. <laughs> Next, bees living the high life in five star luxury. Now you can't say I don't take you anywhere special. Today, we are at the Mayfair Hotel, one of Adelaide's five star premium hotels. And we're going to meet some, well, permanent residents that the whole town is buzzing about. Come with me. Hi, Bethany, Hello. how are you going? Good, good. I've come up to see your famous permanent residence. Oh, yes, my Mayfair rooftop bees. Now, how many have you got here? Oh, too many, probably 40,000 <laughs> happy residents. They're very lucky they have a very Hopefully glamorous address. <laughs> multi-storey with incredible views of the city, its own balcony, landscape gardens and large pool, these bees are living large in luxury. The idea of this mini hotel on top of a hotel was Bethany's. Not only a passionate beekeeper, but executive chef here at the Mayfair. Bethany, um, it's amazing what you've got up here. It's a little hidden treasure. Where did your passion for bees come from? 
Oh, I suppose I'm a bit of an environmentalist and um, I really wanted to help the bee population because it was having a hard time globally. It was in the news, it was in the magazines, the plight of the bees. With the management of the Mayfair embracing sustainable food practices, Bethany's vision for a bee resort among the rooftops became a reality. Fittingly, located just across from Adelaide's iconic Beehive Corner, these city slickers have settled beautifully into their fancy new home. And their flight path has them buzzing all around the CBD. Where would they gather? their pollen oh. and nectar from. Oh, they eat well. They go over to Government House, oh, hang, out, hang out there, hang out Light Square, uh, Botanic Gardens, it's not too far. Mm, so, they've, you know, there's a mixed variety of different pollens and nectars and European mm. trees and native mm. trees. The golden goodness the bees produce is used in the hotel's signature cocktail, the Honey Trap, and some delectable desserts like the aptly named Beehive. There's even a South Australian honey tasting cart, just like different wines. Each one has a different flavour, from floral and sweet to citrus and rich butterscotch. So Matt, what have you got there? Oh, this is the signature cocktail of the Hennessy Bar, the Honey Trap. Thank you very much indeed. I'll try it out. Oh, that is absolutely superb. I can't wait to tackle this. Here we go. Oh. Mm. That is magnificent. So, why don't you come and enjoy the sweet life at the Mayfair Hotel? You never know, I might still be here. <laughs> Even if you're not a guest at the Mayfair, you can taste their delicious, oozy offerings at the Mayflower Restaurant and Bar and Hennessy Rooftop Bar. Simply call or check their website for opening hours. Coming up, we meet the pride of South Australia. There's no shortage of ways to get to know the residents at Monato Zoo. From the cheeky meerkats, to the fascinating chimps, and even the chilled cheetahs. Getting within a whisker of these amazing animals is the hallmark of a great day out here. But today I'm trying out Monato's latest face-to-face -face encounter and it's going to get my heart thumping. It's with the big cats, but it's going to make these guys look like kittens. We're on our way to the Lions 360 experience and that means we'll be the ones inside a cage. Keeper Tim Maloney tells us how to stay safe. First and foremost, even though they are in captivity, they're certainly as wild as they can be. So please don't put any part of your body through the mesh because they'll grab it and they'll rip it off and you won't get it back. This tunnel leads us into the lion habitat and to the highly secure steel cage, where we'll be able to meet the zoo's lionesses face to face and even feed them. But right now, it doesn't really feel like we're the ones in charge. Good girls coming up. Oh, Such a warm me. day. The lionesses know what's in store when visitors come. Juicy chunks of fresh meat served with barbecue tongs. Really, just hors d'oeuvres for these ladies who weigh in at up to 140 kilos. But they're surprisingly polite when it comes to accepting an offering. I reckon you do that? I could do that. I just want to pet it for. I won't. Please I won't. don't, yeah. So there's plenty of meat on the other end of it. That's the way. Great job. Yeah. Perfect. The whole idea behind the Lions 360, it's based around the shark diving experience that you can do in Port Lincoln. It's about getting the person into their habitat and getting them up close and personal to these lions. I suppose our main sort of um, role here at Monato is an educational role. We also get people very close to these animals and hopefully inspire the next generation of conservationists. There are about 20,000 of them left in the wild. I and mean, the main reason being is the fact that they get shot and killed or caught up in snare wires because they're often considered a bit of a pest in a lot of parts of Africa. Any or all of the zoo's seven lionesses may turn up on a given day. But feeding duties are limited to just right, four visitors, so it's absolutely essential to book ahead. Today, I'll be serving Tiombe. 
So this is just a snack for them, isn't it? Just a little morsel. It really is, yeah. What would they eat during the day normally? So we give these animals a main feed five times a week, and then we have two rest days a week as well. And that's to try and replicate feeding habits in the wild. Last bit, Tiambi. Good girl. Oh, amazing. I think she's still actually looking at me, not at the me. <laughs> Even if you're not getting handy with the tongs, there is still plenty of time to get close to these impressive cats. We spend about 20 minutes inside the cage and you can even pretend you're out on the African savannah thanks to a clever built-in safari car. You know that MGM line that you hear at the beginning of the movies? I always thought that was fake, done in post. Believe me, that sounds real. Back on the bus, the adventure continues with a chance to see many of Monato's other African residents. But I get the feeling that today, nothing's going to top the lions. I thought they would be smaller than me, but it turns out they're way bigger. The female lions were just like cats and fighting over food. My cats at home do the same thing. <laughs> but probably not as scary. Yeah. <laughs> The Lions 360 experience is held twice daily, depending on the weather. So have a prowl around Monato's website and pounce on some tickets. It's an unforgettable adventure with real bite.